What's up guys? Today we've got another home theater tech tip discussion. We're going to talk about RCA and XLR cables, also known as unbalanced and balanced cables. Now if you're new to the channel and want to keep up on what's new in the home theater space, then consider subscribing for new weekly videos. Alright, I'm going to try and keep this as easy as possible to follow. So you may have noticed on the back of your receiver or amplifier or any of your audio gear, this odd looking connection. This is a balanced or XLR output. This will output sound using an XLR cable like this one. These types of connections are usually found on higher end amplifiers and receivers or anything that outputs high quality audio. The most common type of pre-out that we see on receivers and amplifiers is the RCA connection, which looks like this. I'm sure you've got a bunch of these in a box somewhere. So why do we have two different types of outputs and which one is the best to use? Well, if you take a look at an RCA cable, you'll see there is a pin in the center of the cable. This is the signal wire. It carries your audio from one end of the cable to the other. The outer ring here is the ground. This is basically a shield that will keep interference from getting to the signal and causing unwanted noise like buzzing or humming. Cheaper cables will have less shielding and they'll be more prone to getting noise and interference. So if you've got a rack full of poorly shielded cables, they could potentially pick up noise from each other or from any other kind of radio frequency and even your own home theater equipment. Keep in mind that any kind of cable can act as an antenna which can draw all kinds of noise to it. So be sure to pick up some high quality cables. Thin cable like this, bad. Thick cable like this, good. Now taking a look at an XLR cable, you'll see there are three pins inside the cable. One is the ground, just like an RCA cable has, so it'll act as a shield for noise and interference. And one pin will carry the signal, just like the RCA cable. This is your positive signal. Now the other pin will also carry the same signal but in reverse, or the negative signal. It's flipped by 180 degrees or reverse polarity. So when the signal is traveling from one end of the cable to the other, they'll cancel each other out. Now if any noise was to creep into the signal path, then it'll be canceled out as well since any noise would also be on both pins and out of polarity. When the signal reaches the end of the cable, the out of polarity or negative signal is then flipped so that both signals are now positive. So now your movie soundtrack or song gets to its destination untouched by nasty noises. Now balanced connections are great for long cable lengths since longer cables are more susceptible to picking up interference. A short cable length, like the distance from your receiver to an amplifier, can be fine for unbalanced RCA cables. But if you're noticing any kind of noise creeping into your speakers, you can troubleshoot it by using an XLR cable and see if that works to eliminate the issue. There's also a ton of other things you can do to check for problems, but we're only talking about XLRs and RCAs today. For me personally, if I've got the choice, I usually use XLRs, but some pre-pros and receivers just don't have them. Now, if any of you guys have something to add, then leave it down below in the description. Let us know what you prefer, RCA or XLR. Thanks for watching, follow us on social media, and if you want to support the channel and get exclusive content and giveaways, then stop by our Patreon page. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and we'll see you guys again in the next one.